Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy, Dave Stevens, and I'm an instructor over at Capulani Community College, and I have brought one of my colleagues here today to talk about uh, GDPR. 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 Uh, you're the resident expert, so I'm going to be asking you questions. Oh, and... that's not fair. <laughs> Everyone knows you're the smart guy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Moore, Hi. adjunct faculty, Capulani Community College, which is part of the University of Hawaii system. I just want to Keep emphasizing that uh, the system. This is this is our University of Hawaii system and Capulani Community College. We're pioneering some of these efforts, and uh, we're the campus with a view. <laughs> Are we the only campus? With, no, no. Windward has a campus view. It's we, beautiful. We have the best. View. We have the best view. Waikiki. <laughs> we could see Waikiki from our camp. That's our only claim to fame. No, 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 no. It's just one of the many. One of the many. Well, okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, GDPR. First of all, what is it? It's a thing from Europe that causes a lot of email. And we've been getting a lot of email. Everybody, not just the two of us, some of them, all of them, most of them have been getting on, and they've been going, what the hell is this? And why did it come all at once? Right. It came all at once because it just kicked in on the 25th of May. And right. So, and we, we've been getting emails up until the 25th. Yeah. Saying it's coming, it's coming, yeah. it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the companies that have been sending us those emails were getting those warnings that, oh, by the way, if you don't send out these emails, you'll, you're going to get ma major fines. And so that's why all of a sudden they started sending us all of those messages. And we're all going, does it matter? Are we what are we supposed to do with this? Can we Well, if you read or? the size 8 font at the bottom of the yeah. email, yes. it says click here yeah. uh, to redo your subscription preferences. So most of these have to do with, can we send you email? Because the GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation for the Eurozone, that's all the countries that are still in the EU, including England right now. That's right. right? 28 of them plus and a half. And a or, sprinkle. Yeah, or 27 and a half, but whatever. <laughs> the almost. Yeah, yeah. Because Brexit sort of. is not done yet. Yeah. Uh, so um, we, we get these emails. And because of these rules, you have to explicitly opt in, and we've all been on those web pages where you fill something out, you join a contest or, or something and signing up for a newsletter, and, and lo and behold, somewhere on the page, there are check boxes that says we can market to you, and those check boxes are pre-checked. Oh. And you have to uncheck them if oh. you don't want that. It's very clever. It was a neat marketing trick started in uh, the late 80s, and uh, AOL pioneered it. So now Thanks, they... AOL. <laughs> So now they make you opt in, but they opt in for you just in case you didn't want to. Well, you know, they're really looking out for you, Tom. Yeah, of course. They're, this I, is for your... I wouldn't want to be cut off. Wait, come on. If you didn't have your recipe of the day, and you're, like, for some reason somebody signed me up, I think this was a joke, somebody signed up for a Bible verse of the day, I, and I can't get them to stop no matter how many times I've sent them email. They just won't stop. I think they think it's funny that I get a Bible verse every day. Uh, painfully relevant sometimes, but you know, I get one every day. <laughs> but you're supposed to opt in. Um, also, you get uh, some of these because they're supposed to have increased transparency. Ah, oh, yes, transparency and accountability. What? I, what's that word? Accountability. I, I'm an American, sorry. Well, that, well yes, I understand. And a bureaucrat, I might add. A bureaucrat, yes. I work for the state. Yes, <laughs> I work, I'm from the government, I'm here to help you. Right. Yeah, uh, accountability, well that's why they have to have a compliance officer. So oh, it's data a, protection officer requirement, right. But they don't have to have it if they're a smaller company. Well, they have to have, they have, to have one up the chain somewhere. Somewhere. So uh, Whose fault it gets to be. What a great job. It's my fault. Well, that's, that's any project manager. It's <laughs> your fault and you have no power to change it. Yes. Well, welcome to the job. <laughs> yeah. But, but hence the accountability. It's built, right. accountability is built in. Whether it does anything or not, it's built in. Transparency, likewise, built in, whether it does anything or not. It's, oh, it's in the rules. Do you think it'll be like the airline CEOs that uh, when something bad happens, they resign, but then you, they pop up at another airline two weeks later? So the, deep, the data protection officers will just rotate around the companies as, as they get blamed for stuff? If they're really as smart as they seem, they would have that all sort of planned out. <laughs> okay, Jerry, tomorrow you're over here and I'm over there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the way a lot of companies do that, and that's the only way you get to be a CEO. A CEO. It's, a, it's kind of a career option. 
So now we have the DPO, Data Protection Officer. Now, let's talk about, does this affect the United States? Yeah, well, <laughs> to the extent that you have data, that company X, Y, or Z in Kansas has data on residents in the EU, it affects them. So if we're tracking anything about residents or, or somebody who belongs in the EU, the Eurozone, uh, we have to abide by these regulations. So that's why Google, Facebook, Twitter, all the global companies, Amazon, everybody has to update their policies. Uber sent me one. Um, I was surprised they kept my email, actually, but apparently they do. I'm being tracked uh, by everybody. But I, I actually appreciate this. Now, this was, uh, as far as I know, this is an, uh, an ex not really an extension, but a change out and an uh, increase of policy from the uh, Data Protection Directive of 1995 in 1995, the 1995, yeah. Right, so they took a long time to come about to this, and they took four years to create the GDPR. Well, my, the little bird told me that they actually voted this in in 2016. It was 1995, and they thought about it, they sort of meditated on it until, <laughs> until 2016, Ooh. and then they decided, oh, damn, maybe we should actually set a deadline, <laughs> since, you know, deadlines apparently work. And in 2016, probably around May, it's just a wild guess, yeah. they set the uh, 2018 deadline. And of course, everybody that had uh, compliant or needed to be compliant with these rules waited until April of this year to do anything about it. That's why we got this massive email spamming probably so. campaign from everybody. And now it's gone oddly dark, which I find relieving. Everyone's vacation kicked in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't sign up. They couldn't hook up for vacation until then. Oh, it's wonderful. It's kind of a Zen thing for me. I'm like, oh, no email. Oh, I'm loving this. This is great. Well, what inquiring minds want to know is whether the fines, which are gigantor, mm. uh, whether they kick in for the Kansas companies for the uh, how you say in English, uh, Google, and AOL, and all your favorite companies, whether those fines apply because they're gigantic. 4% uh, of gross revenue for a year or 20 million euro? That's for the, that's for the serious crimes. For the minor crimes, those are, those are, the, those are you know, the venal sins anyway. Uh, mortal sins are 20 million. The venal sins are only 10 million and 2% of gross revenue. And it's not profit, it's revenue. And it's global revenue. Mm. So that's how the rules work theoretically in, in Europe. Whether that applies to companies outside Europe, I don't know. Maybe only the rules apply, maybe not the enforcement. If there's no enforcement, I don't know, you know. Well, in the past, if, if you have a company that has a central base in like the United States and you put an office in another country and you don't comply with the rules and they fine you and you don't pay, they just say, well, okay, you can't do business here anymore. And you're out. So I would imagine companies like Amazon would take this very seriously because if the Eurozone says you're out, that's 28 countries worth of people you no longer get to do business with. And it, uh, I would imagine the competition would take over immediately. Sure. Because Amazon set the standard. All you have to do is do what Amazon does. That's right. And uh, you, you don't have to start from scratch anymore. Just you right. Know. You just complete the business model. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, they're out. Cool. I'm in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, so it. And you can even hire all the guys they fired. Who you know. So it's, it's even easier oh, than you think. You get the buildings, the equipment, the staff, the model. Sure. Why not? Yeah. So it, hope that works in Kauai with the last Kmart. Good. Hey, Amazon, uh, don't take this serious because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move out to the Eurozone, and I'll take over for you. Yeah. Uh, actually, I like Amazon. AOL, don't take this seriously. I'll take over for you, and AOL will become like a good thing again. Kay yeah. sold his house in, in around Maryland for like $47 million. So a AOL worked for a while. Wow, so GDPR really hit him. <laughs> I had to sell his house? No, I just, it was, a, it was an AOL <laughs> reference. You know. $47 billion. What do you get? Not billion, million. Million? million. How, what, yeah. that house? Yeah, like, for a house, yeah. Well, that's, that's probably a two bedroom apartment in yeah. San Fran. Uh, right. Yeah, something in the like heart that. of the city. Well, okay. I wish I'd gone to put it. Van Nuys on. Boulevard right before the bridge. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's talk about well, some other stuff. Um, wh why would um, I have to be compliant? There's certain things I, I do in my business that would make me have to be compliant. And I'm carrying data in a database somewhere. Uh, I'm tracking people from the Eurozone. And it just doesn't have to be 
name, IP address, uh, geolocation, references, pictures, or whatever. This could also be behavioral statistics, which have been around for decades upon decades. We're trying to track uh, behavior because we want to know how people move around the internet, how long they stay on a page, stickiness, uh, how many times they click on things that we put in front of them, their click-through rate, and uh, how long they actually stay on a website, which is very difficult to do, actually, because if someone closes their browser before they, they log off, or if they just leave the page without logging off, you don't know when they actually left. That timer just keeps on ticking. So if you have multiple websites, like uh, Facebook and Twitter were hooked up, and you went from Facebook to Twitter in the same browser, you could, if you owned both companies, know when you left Facebook and when you arrived on Twitter, so you'd have those statistics, right? You're tracking behavior, um, and that's part of the statistics GDPR covers. I'm, I'm a little uh, confused because I, I understand what you've said, and <laughs> what I read in my notes is that they're only allowed, these companies are only allowed to keep statistics that are essential to current business. And that's a tricky one. Yeah. Because so, you can make an argument about a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, Amazon, everything about you matters because they're selling you things. Yeah. Oh, um, one other thing you don't have to uh, be selling your goods or services in the EU. For nope. this to apply. No, it only applies where they live. That's, you know. Well, if you've got the data, no matter what, even if you're not selling it, that's right. you are owning it, and you're the curator of that data, therefore you're responsible for it. Right. You're also responsible for telling people uh, the data you have on those people. You have to tell those people, be transparent, what you're doing with the data and what data you're collecting. Uh, and you have to do it in, again, not size 8 font in yeah. light gray at the bottom of the website on the 13th click through in your website on an inaccessible link that's no longer there. Um, and this is a trick that's been done many times. You know, that one page that still exists, but unless you type it manually into the URL, you know, into the address bar, it's not going to work because um, there's no links to it. So you can't do that anymore. So those emails we've been getting, uh, quite complete. Here's what we're doing with your data. Here's our new privacy policy with a link to the privacy policy. Which and I, no one ever goes to. Well, you know, I, I went to a couple, and I'm kind of glad I did. They're, they're not the legalese I'm used to. Yeah, well, They've hence the transfer. Yeah, yeah, you're right. right. They're writing to maybe an eighth grade reading level, uh, which means our current administration would be completely lost. But uh, for me, I was actually able to make through because, you know, we teach college. So sure. we can read it at an eighth grade level. Of course. Almost. If you don't believe us, just ask us. <laughs> and we'll tell you yeah. in, in writing, yes. in simple sentences. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> in a handwritten note. Uh, what else do you know about GDPR? Well, when things go wrong, as surely they will, they've got 72 hours to let you know. And 72, that's, a, that's it? Well, that's what it says in the, in the not-so-fine print. So that's much better than some of the recent um, things that have happened locally that weren't notified, that we weren't notified out in 72 hours. So, you know, 24 hours would be nicer, but I think it's 72 hours after they know. So if the breach happens at X and they find out three weeks later, then after they become aware, they've got 72 hours to publicize that information, at least to those that were affected, if not to the community at large. You're right. Those, those rules are, are uh, wonderful rules, and they need to be in place in the United States. In the United States, we have a different set of standards. Here, uh, Equifax got away with not telling us about their first breach, which was in March of that year. Um, just last year, and uh, they got away with it because the first breach that they detected, no data left the network. But if, from a hacking point of view, and I teach cybersecurity, yeah. um, that was the breach that probably got them in the back door so they could plant the malware with the back doors and, uh, and come back later and start rooting around for the data that they wanted. And right about June, they found it and took it. So had it been stopped, in March of that year, instead of, I believe they did it in late April of that year, um, they wouldn't have had that problem. Well, the whole point of giving people notice that their security has been breached, or if a company's security has been breached and my data has been put at risk, the whole point is to advise me so that I can take protective measures. 
And you know, if if we're in a Yahoo kind of a situation, I find out. Oh, don't go down that road. So many oh, years my God, yeah. later. Okay, let's talk about this right after the break. We're going to take one minute, come right back, and discuss these rules in Ernst, and we'll discuss the Yahoo and situation. Winning. Yes. Until then, stay safe. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner. And I'm Beatrice Gantelmo. And we have come in this series, Young and Old Alike, to take a look at our past, your past, and the fastest not seen history books. History books are his story, and what we refer to as mirrors of the past. But we, as colonized people, indigenous peoples, and people of color, look into the mirror and do not see ourselves there. On the ties that bind, we will examine those underlying causes. Please join us with the Ties That Bind on Wednesdays at noon, twice a month. We look for you there. Aloha. Aloha. Thanks for coming back. Appreciate you watching the end of the show. And then we haven't bored you to death uh, already. Uh, Tom and I are just discussing some of the GDPR regulations. We're going to do like a tech minute now, though. You bet. We're going we're gonna to steer off. We're going to follow up with what we discussed last week, uh, the VPN filter malware that's been going all over the world. What do you hear? What do you know? I think it's the Russians, but I just just always assume it's the Russians. That's an easy one. Yeah. That's a fallback. Or yeah. North Korea. Well, that's why we have a Russian on staff, just so we have the inside information. <laughs> we love you, Boris. <laughs> we love you, man. Uh. <laughs> um, yeah, well, inquiring minds want to know, if I, if I reboot my router, will I lose all the settings? Yeah, okay. No, no, I won't. No, you're, you're not supposed to say yeah. You're, that you're that was the easy to, question. You're supposed to do this right. So if you're going to re, re, okay, rebooting the router, unplug it. Yeah. And this is just reboot. You unplug it, and you got to wait 30 seconds because there's electronic components inside of it. They're called capacitors. 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 Yeah. They, uh, they have electrolytic material that can hold a charge. Like a battery. Like a battery, but very, very light. So they, they, they can go about 30 seconds to a minute. So if you leave your router unplugged for about 30 seconds to a minute, uh, count Mississippis or hippopotamus or whatever you Chimpanzees. want. Chimpanzees. Okay. And, uh, and then you plug it back in and you let it re, uh, reboot. That does not protect you from the virus. However, if you do have this malware on your router, it will go out and try to reach the mothership. It'll phone home. And uh, all these sites are under observation by the FBI and the NSA. And they can tell if your model router is now affected. So we went through TP-Link and a couple of others. That, that Netgear, are, probably. Um, Netgear was one of them. Uh, Linksys, which is the Cisco consumer-grade products, right? Um, but uh, there's a few other. That, like, uh, I didn't see Belkin out there yet. I didn't see uh, Asus. But if you reboot and you've got a Belkin or an Asus and a phone's home, now they can add that to the list as, as the warning. Now, if you want to do it the right way, uh, you need to save your settings. So somewhere in the interface, you always have a web interface. You can go in there and manage your device. And you save all your settings to like a text file or an XML file. They have both formats. And you, you save that to a place that won't get erased on your hard drive or a flash drive. <laughs> Uh, you laugh, but it happens a yeah, lot. Of course. Uh, then, more then, than one, more than one, more than one. Yes. So you, <laughs> more than you one. Say, save it to more than one place. Duplicate, duplicate. Yes. And then uh, there's always a hole in the back somewhere, a little pin size hole, so you can stick a paper clip in your router and press down on that hole while it's powered on. That resets all the device settings. What's a paper clip? Oh. Yeah, we don't use those much anymore. A paper clip uh, that's a little metal thing with spirals on it that yeah. holds paper together. A uh, little thicker than a stapler. Okay. S staples hold things together like this thing. There's a staple here. Sorry, we're preaching to millennials. We have to say that. Yeah, okay. uh, <laughs> so we have this, uh, once we save this thing, then even if we, say, change the firmware, Right. We can still recover all those settings so we don't have to worry. There should be backward compatibility for all the major settings that, that you're redoing. You say Mac whitelisting, uh, your port forwarding, 
um, your network SSID, uh, most likely your password, but you should reset it anyway. Um, so I, I guess I didn't finish. We're, we're keeping that paperclip in there for about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, maybe a minute for some models. Um, you should refer to the manufacturer's specifications for that. Then power it off. Let it completely erase. And then power back it on, and power it back on. Now you're going to go back to manufacturer settings, so you're going to have to physically plug your computer into your router. Otherwise, you know, you can't get on anymore. Most people think, oh, I just log back in on Wi-Fi. No, Wi-Fi is not there anymore, right? You just wiped it. So then you have to uh, reload your settings from that oh, file. Oh, you can't just rub the floppy disk on top of the router and have the settings jump back in. That hasn't worked since like the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> those floppies were a little bigger that, back then. They had the Velcro bottom. Like, we're totally kidding. Yeah. It's not true. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Tom, Tom. So if your notebook computer doesn't have an Ethernet jack? Uh, yeah, so that's, you got to get an adapter. Yeah, so it takes a little, the big point is it takes a little planning. I mean, like laying out what you're going to do in what order is, is real helpful before you start. Again, we're talking to millennials. Oh, like the plan my God. is a series of instructions <laughs> that you've made for yourself that you can follow once you've made these plans. Yeah. It should include timing, equipment. Order. Uh, so sequence of events. Sequence of events. Yeah. It should include uh, uh, your labor who needs to help you. Yeah. And uh, by all means, tell everybody else in the house what you're doing yeah. before you do it. Otherwise, someone's going to run and say, I was just watching, did Jon Snow live? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know. I almost got my taxes filed on time. <laughs> I was just about to click submit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or that email was really important. Uh, I wonder if I'm going to get it back. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, speaking of that, by the way, I was uh, troll, I, I do this every once in a while, I troll the dark web to see if any of my information actually is in the hands of nefarious people. And unfortunately, it is. And uh, I was, uh, I only knew this because uh, during my security clearance uh, check a couple of years ago with the Department of Defense, uh, OPM, the Office of Personnel Management. Oh, I yeah. remember this story. So they, they, they took my social security card and photocopied it right there and scanned it into digital and I saw them upload it and put it into my file. Guess what I found on the dark web? A picture of your social security card. Yeah. yeah. I, I was Sweet. tempted to take a selfie with it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I found it. Um, but no, it's, it wasn't even for sale. It's out there for free. I found it with a Tor browser, and oh, no, it's oh, depressing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, not it's not even worth the price yeah. of admission. But uh, yeah, it's it's out there with all the other OPM data. Are you going to sue OPM about for this? About this? No, they because they offered me uh, data monitoring service for a year. UH did that. Yeah, because yeah. everybody gets briefed. It's not a matter of if. Yeah. It's when. Absolutely. And a lot of people don't realize that, right? Yeah. Uh, VPN filter, by the way, uh, this this malware we're talking about and all these consumer-grade routers, this is small and home office stuff, mm -hmm. um, that has uh, three stages, and each attack can perform different things, uh, but it can be used uh, for monitoring you and extracting your data on your network, or it can be used as a relay or what we call a proxy. Sweet. So you can be the one held liable for attacking another computer because it's your system. But I didn't know, but I didn't know. Yeah, it doesn't care. No, no one cares in the, in the government. What is so, uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Ignorance of a hack is no excuse either. You just get fined, especially if you, you have no lawyers. And I don't have a lawyer anymore. That's good. Uh, yeah, that's kind of Vicky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, can you be my lawyer? Uh, no, the no, there's a law against that. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's how my, I, know, I know at least that much about lawyering. Well, let's talk about the difference between uh, these general protection, uh, data protection rules, uh, regulation in the EU, versus things like compliance over here in the United States, where we use uh, things like NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technologies. Uh, they work with the DOD and the NSA to come up with a list of rules that you should uh, apply to your network and your infrastructure and your employees uh, and your security in general so that you will keep yourself to a reasonable level of security, uh, safe data and security while you're interacting with the federal government. Recently, they just enacted a subset of those major rules called NIST 800-171, which is for small and medium businesses. 109 checks to do on your business, which could entail uh, over 600 different control checks, uh, things like how to set up your router, password length, 
uh, your security systems, where's your perimeter of your data, how to encrypt and separate your data access controls, and it goes on and on. This is not the same as GDPR. Correct. GDPR is all about how we're handling data and telling people we're handling their data. It's mostly about transparency and responsibility. However, uh, I, and I read 88 pages wow. of the GDPR. I know. It was hard. I had to take a nap and come back. Uh, it, but because it's written just like every other document you'd imagine. The GDPR. Yeah, the GDPR. Because I almost read 23 pages. <laughs> The same thing happened to you. You start drinking and go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> this is so boring. Oh, my God. Where's my scotch? So uh, I, I read this, and I, I didn't see any of those rules, like you have to encrypt data. But it just it says you have to keep it safe, in a safe place, and you can't let it out outside of your bounds. So I'd imagine there's other regulations that apply in the EU, just like we have over here. Well, for military is. stuff. Uh, no, for small and medium businesses now, the 800-171 applies to anybody doing business with the DOD, right. Department of Defense, or any of the Uniformed Armed Services, FBI, NSA, and all that. Um, but it's not just if I'm, like if you're the DOD, it's not just if I'm doing business with you. Okay. I could be doing business with this person who does business with that person who does business with you. I oh. still have to comply, right? Because you're in the chain. So here's the question I didn't see in the GDPR. If you're collecting the data and I do business with him and he does business with her and she does business with you and you have the data, do I have to comply? Seems like that would be their preference. Whether they can enforce it, uh, I don't know. But you, you have the data, I don't have the data. Mm. It's the curator of the data. Where's the data stored, right? However, consequentially, I could have access to your data. And so I, I'm wondering about that regulation. I still haven't gone deep enough to find out. Did you actually read all those 88 pages? Oh, I can't remember any of them, so I skimmed them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I almost read them. I sort of read them. I put them under my pillow. Well, you know, one of the questions is, what about GDPR 2.0? Maybe that's the thing that's going to come in there. Have you heard any sort of I've heard whispers? whispers. I've heard whispers, yeah. but only from, uh, you know, the, the uh, tech magazines out there saying, mm -hmm. you know, now that we've done this, we don't see any hardcore regulations like you have to apply cryptography and, and uh, lock down your routers and use a firewall and all that stuff. So maybe that's the second part. Uh, hey, we had a good talk. We got to wrap this up. Anything? You're kidding, is it? We, it's almost we've Christmas. gone through Again? the whole 30 minutes. Oh my God, <laughs> this, this keeps happening. I know, I, I can't help it. But uh, this is the length of show that we have. I hope to have you back very soon and we'll discuss I hope you come back. Well, I hope you Very never soon. leave. Yeah. You can stay here. Uh, no, there's no, going to be no, someone no. else that will want complain. the room for something, yes. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, I love to have you here, and we're <laughs> going to be back next week with another great show. Until then, stay safe.